currently on Game Pass right now is Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. I'm Dream Maze, and welcome to a final review for Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. I'll just give you a rundown of the game's description, uh, in case you'd like to play it for yourself, uh, and then I'll give you some of my personal impressions and how I felt about playing the game. Uh, followed up by an actual score for a final review for you guys. Take that and use that uh, as a tool for yourself to go and decide as to whether you'd like to play the game or not. Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a Metroidvania-styled video game developed by a Japanese indie studio, Artplay, and published by 505 Games. The game's development was led by the former Castlevania series producer Koji Igarashi and is considered a spiritual successor to the series. The game was released for PlayStation 4, Windows, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch in June of 2019. You play as Miriam, an orphan scarred by an alchemist curse which is slowly crystallizing her body. To save humanity and herself in the process, she must fight through the castle and defeat the summoner, Jeebel. I am actually old enough uh, to have played uh, Castlevania and uh, some of the series back in the day. Uh, so it's very cool that uh, this is kind of a spiritual successor game to it. Uh, and what is even cooler than that is I was able to beat it. <laughs> Um, this game took me um, 38 gigabytes of video recording, uh, approximately 48 hours of video recording to uh, complete through the game. Uh, according to my menu, it took me 24 hours uh, to beat the game. So you play as Miriam, an orphan, uh, who actually has quite a few really cool abilities. Uh, she can um, uh, encapsulate shards and put them within her body, um, which gives her different abilities, uh, passive or active abilities which you can therefore use to get through the castle. Some of the bosses uh, were difficult. Uh, did take a number of tries for myself. My reaction time is just not what it used to be. Um, so yeah, it did take me some time to get through the bosses, but I'm happy, happy I did, happy I got through the game. Um, and yeah, I would, uh, I would suggest uh, giving it a go there uh, if you have played Castlevania back in the day. If you haven't, be trepidatious about possibly choosing this as a game because it is difficult. So, uh, final review time. I have five categories. Uh, they're each worth two points. Continuous challenge. Interesting story and good end. Flexibility and useful rewards. Fun and realism. And bugs, flaws, and defects. Uh, continuous challenge. Uh, was there? Absolutely. Uh, you had to get this ability to jump to be able to go to the area where you could get the ability to bounce around as a laser to go to this other area. So... There was a continuous challenge um, in trying to find items and actually defeat enemies and bosses that are in your way. Uh, so you're going to get a full two points for that category. Interesting story, good end. Uh, it was absolutely an interesting story, and it was uh, it was definitely a good end. There was actually two endings to it. There was a bad ending, and there was a good ending. I did do the bad ending uh, and realized, oh, well, there's a lot more to the game here, so I got to do play through the rest of the game and finish it up. Um, so there were um, there is actually two endings. Um, but you are going to get a full two points for interesting story and good end uh, because it it was there, it was present. Flexibility and useful rewards. Uh, flexibility, yes, uh, there was lots of flexibility. You could choose to go up in personal with a dagger or go back and shoot with a gun. Um, there is lots of versatility. Even your activated abilities, you can choose kind of whatever you want and what, whatever adapt your play style to make you stronger. Uh, so there was flexibility. Useful rewards was there, but they were a little hidden. So I'm gonna. Uh, you're only going to get one and a half out of this because useful rewards... Uh, the, one of the ones that come to mind is Dragon Scale Breastplate. In order to get through one of the areas, you need to get this breastplate. And this breastplate was in a specific chest, in a specific area that you had to go back and revisit after getting a specific ability. Um, so useful rewards were there, but they were very hidden. Um, so one and a half uh, out of two for that category. A fun and realism uh, was definitely there. It took place in 1800s England. Uh, so it had, uh, you know, some of the older stained glass feeling to it and, you know, you get a, uh, it definitely had the fun and realism to it. So you're going to get a full, uh, two points for that. So bugs, lost defects. I, I really didn't, um, have, uh, very many. I did have, you know, the odd creature that would bug out or I couldn't quite hit, uh, just for any reason. Like I'm, you know, I'm obviously hitting the character, but it's not actually, uh, killing the enemy. So there was uh, a couple of bugs in that regard. Uh, 
Also did have a rollback probably about 45 minutes. That really annoyed me because uh, it took uh, really, it was a hard fought 45 minutes that I got rolled back and yeah, it hurt. It stung. Uh, so bugs, flaws, defects. There is a couple that are still uh, present in the game, even though it's been out for a number of years, um, that you may run into. So, uh, you're only gonna get one and a half out of this category. So, uh, altogether, that's a score out of 9 out of 10 for Bloodstained, uh, Ritual of the Night there. It was a very fun game. I did used to play, like I said, through Castlevania when I was younger, so I uh, did know I, what I was in for. If you have not played through Castlevania, uh, do be aware, I'm going to say it one more time, this is a difficult game, um, and you are in for a challenge. Um, but with that challenge comes adrenaline running through your system. Thanks for joining me. Do hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell for future videos. Until next time, peace.